I don't want to spend a lot of time dressing up this track. It's just a test track. But I do want it to feel normal as I drive through it. So what I want to do is add some grass and some trees and really give myself a system that I can use in the future for other tracks as I make them. The starter content does come with a grass texture I can use for the entire terrain. As you can see, it's pretty basic. It's just a green texture that will cover the entire map with something that looks like grass. The details don't need to be that advanced because the player will be in a car the entire time. I also want to add a grass mesh. To do that, we're going to add a grass layer, and there's a grass texture that does come with the standard assets, so we're going to go ahead and use that. We'll use the grass frond 2, set everything to a smaller size and scale, and then we can just start adding grass using the paint texture built into the Unity engine. And as you can see, if I just select this brush and click, it adds grass textures to the map. And what we're going to do is just kind of add grass in any kind of way that I see fit. I want to reduce the height and width and noise spread, all that stuff, because it's a driving game. It doesn't require that detailed of an environment. And as I add the grass to the track, you can see that it covers up the track a little bit where I have the track laid. But there's a neat feature built right into Road Architect that will actually rebuild the road over all of these obstacles and remove them for you, so you don't have to worry about placing things over your track accidentally. I'm just placing the grass as I see fit, and then select the road from the hierarchy window, and choose Update All Roads, and you can see that the road actually removes the grass that was too close to the road. And I feel like that's a pretty terrific setting. It's also going to do the same thing for trees. The starter content comes with two trees, so I feel like this broadleaf tree can go before the hills and then the other tree will go after the hills, and I'm just making some adjustments to the settings here so that way it doesn't overpopulate the track with trees. And again, it doesn't matter if there are trees over the track because I can take those out. And now I use this conifer tree to add some depth where the hills start. It's very important that when you add a tree to the tree painter, that you've got to hit the add button down at the bottom. Don't just close the window. I did that a couple of times by accident. I think this will give it a nice look as you drive through it. And again, there's trees on the track, but all we have to do is update all roads from the road architect system, and it removes the trees. And as we drive through it, now it's starting to look a little bit more normal, where you would expect to see some trees and some grass, and I don't like how the grass is kind of popping up there, but we'll fix that at a later time. I just want to give myself a system that I can use to replicate on future tracks I haven't made yet, so that way I know if I place a tree it's going to work, if I place potentially buildings or lakes or who knows what I might have planned for the future. But I just want to make sure that what I place is going to work and look okay in the world as I drive through it. Oh, oh no, hey, those barrels are physics actors. So that's good to know, you can drive through them and they respond and one of them even made it all the way off the bridge. Okay, so now that that's done, what I want to do is go into lighting and add some fog. That way as the player drives through the level, it doesn't feel like all the assets are popping up on them. I like to drag the lighting window to the viewer rather than leave it open. I want to leave the skybox alone for now. There are some options you can poke through, but what I'm planning on doing is actually downloading a pack of skyboxes just to apply to my scene. What I really want to do is enable fog. There's a few settings once you do enable fog, exponential, squared, linear, or just exponential. I think I want to go with linear, and so that way I can give it a start and an end, and then you can see that it actually gives me a distance of the fog and there's also a density setting in there too, then that'll give me something to play with. I don't want the fog to start at zero. I'm going to change that to 150 and then make it end at 600 so that way it's more of a distant fog and gives the player the illusion of the distance of the track. Just give it a minute or so for the scene to render up all that fog and we're good. And that's looking okay. Now for a basic level here, I'm fine with that. We'll take all this out, doesn't need to be there, you can also adjust the color settings of the fog. By default, it's a gray color. I don't know if changing this is going to make much difference in the scene. It looks a little hazy now. 
What I want to do now is fix the connection in this road. These two nodes where the figure 8 meets up aren't connecting properly, and it's causing some errors in the game in terms of the collision where the road is supposed to connect, but for some reason it's not detecting that one is a starting node and the other is an end node. So what I want to do first is test the tool. This tool should automatically connect the roads together. What I'm going to do is just make another little sample road off to the side here that's just a circle, and I want to see if I can make a connection happen here. I'm going to add a few nodes and quickly go through and make a circular road. It doesn't have to be fancy, this is just for testing purposes only. All I want to do is connect up two of the nodes on the end and see if it actually works. Something I learned is that you cannot add a node so close to another road. It must be similar to the detection built in for grasses and trees and other objects where it eliminates them because it didn't want to add another node. But that's okay because what I can do is just grab one of these and use that as the closing node. And if I drop it onto the other one, it connects up just fine and this is what the figure 8 isn't doing for some reason and as a perfect seamless connection with no errors. That's interesting. Let's see what happens if we drive on it. So there might be a gap or something funny happening here. I'm really not sure why the figure eight track isn't responding properly. But the circular track has virtually a perfect road about it. So it goes and there's no seams in the road. It drives like a perfect road. And this is about where the connection might be and there's no seam. Okay, so the circular road does work just fine. So that tells me that the tool is intact and can achieve what my goals are. So now I want to examine my first road and see exactly what's going on with that connection. I think it has something to do with that little tail that you see in the spline tool where the tail is coming off the end of it. Rather than constantly fighting with that and trying to get that all figured out, what I'm going to do is just delete the entire road and start over. And this is also why you don't want to spend too much time getting all the nuance of the road in first before it's something you can actually use in the gameplay. So I'm really glad I got to this point early to where I know in future levels that if the road isn't behaving exactly how I want, that's the first step. And then I'll work on getting some of the other dressing or other options built into Road Architect. With the exterior settings of the road, you can add guardrails, lights to different shoulder settings, you can have different lanes. All that kind of stuff can wait until the track is set and perfect for a game like this one. If this was a game where it was like a city and I had multiple roads intersecting and the point was to drive through a, a city setting where the player had more options, then I'd have to come up with another type of plan here. But for a track game like this one, where it's just a race track, this is perfectly acceptable. Now I forgot what bridge I had used, but the truth is, it doesn't much matter. Close enough is good enough, and I want to make sure it does feel like that figure 8 that I'm looking for. But what I should have done first is connect up these two nodes before dressing up all the other ones, just to make sure that this was going to work out just fine. But as you can see in this road, the connection is made and it does make a perfect scene. And then I think all those errors will go away if I do play on this road. But that's a good figure eight track right there. There's a few nodes that do need to be cleaned up a little bit, so I may work on some of that stuff. But again, that's not as important for the step we're on than it is to make sure the track connects properly and we can drive on it and my car is in a different place. That's okay, we'll just move him uh, about to where the starting position might be. I'd like to start right at this underpass. I feel like that's a pretty good place to be. Of course, maybe that's not high enough. Let's see what happens if we drive under it and all those collision errors are cleared nicely. Driving under it feels normal. It's got a good height to it and we just drive on the track like we would expect. This one works just like it's the same design. So my barrels are gone, but that's okay. I can add them again later if I feel like it. Great, so that works. So now what I want to do is address the skybox. For a game like this, a skybox isn't all that important. It's still something I want to make sure I can update or change just to give the player a different setting if I feel like it. But really it's not something I want to spend a lot of time on because the player won't even have access to a camera that they can manipulate to look at the sky. 
Their eye will be drawn to the road or the environment left and right. The player will hardly ever look up to examine the sky. So a static skybox like this is just fine. We don't need anything dynamic or moving or anything like that because really the player should be done with each level in less than 10 minutes. And that looks just fine for me. The track is just about finished. Next we'll add the UI elements like speed and time.